Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best child voice acting performances in movies. Bucket. <laughs> For this list, we'll be looking at the most remarkable voiceover work pulled off by actors under the age of 16. Which of these performances did you find the most impressive? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Jeremy Suarez as Coda, Brother Bear Brother Bear is one of Disney's more underrated movies. One of the many reasons it deserves more love is because of the supporting performance from Jeremy Suarez. During the movie, he plays an orphaned bear named Coda. First of all, his name's Bucky, not Binky. Second, it wasn't a pine cone, it was a pine nut. And it was huge, even bigger than your fat head. After his mum is slain by a young man named Kenai, the human is transformed into a bear. The newly turned animal must rely on the lively Coda to survive and find a way back. When the young Jeremy Suarez voiced the cub, he more than held his own against Joaquin Phoenix's Kenai. It's a fun and upbeat performance that perfectly matches the character's energy. More importantly, Suarez grabs viewers with his performance. By the end, you'll care for Coda just as much as Kenai does. Okay, here's how I remember it. If the snow is white, then it's all right. Yellow or green is just not clean. I learned that one the hard way. Number 19, Hayden Panettiere as Dot, A Bug's Life. Before Hayden Panettiere was a big film and TV star, or even a teenager, she voiced Dot in A Bug's Life. As the younger sister of Princess Atta, Dot is the only one who believes in perpetual screw-up flick at the beginning of the movie. I know it's a rock! Don't you think I know a rock when I see a rock? I've spent a lot of time around rocks! You're weird, but I like you. The character was already written to be a bright spot in Flick's life, but Penetier helps solidify that the ant is an adorable yet fierce companion. She also has great chemistry with anyone she shares a scene with. Penetier's strong performance made us believe there was a ton of bravery within her minuscule frame. By delivering each line with determination, the actress proved that Dot deserved a ton of respect. Hello, kids. Ready to make some grasshoppers cry? It's payback time, blueberry style! <gasps> Number 18, Judith Barcy as Anne-Marie. All dogs go to heaven. Director Don Bluth once praised Judith Barcy's ability to understand complex verbal directions at such a young age. This can clearly be seen through her performance as Ducky in The Land Before Time. I am not a long neck, I am a big mouth. But I am all alone, I am. However, we'd like to single out Barcy's last role before her tragic death in 1988. In All Dogs Go to Heaven, Barcy played Anne-Marie, a young orphan who could talk to animals. Anne-Marie was consistently a shining beacon of hope in a plot that consists of a surprising amount of double crosses and schemes. Her voice is so sweet, it's bound to make at least a few R's come out. The preteen Barcy made the kind-hearted nature into an incredibly easy character to root for. Charlie, will I ever see you again? Sure. Sure you will, kid. You know, goodbyes aren't forever. Then, goodbye, Charlie. Number 17, Eli Marienthal as Hogarth Hughes, the Iron Giant. Essentially, every element of the Iron Giant is incredible, and Eli Marienthal's performance is no different. Things die. It's part of life. It's bad to kill, but it's not bad to die. At the beginning of his teenage years, Marienthal voiced lead character Hogarth Hughes. He played a young boy who makes a new friend in the form of a massive robot during the Cold War. With a paranoid agent on their tail, Hogarth must hide the giant while coming to terms with the violence it was built to inflict. In each moment, Marion Thor taps into our childlike sense of wonder and adventure. He also makes our heart ache during the more caring and emotional moments. Thanks to Marion Thor's moving performance, the relationship between Hogarth and the robot is the beating heart and soul of this cult classic. I love you. Number 16, Gregory Mann as Pinocchio, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. 
Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio retold the familiar tale with the auteur's distinct sense of style and gorgeous stop-motion animation. There was a lot about it to love, including the wonderful voice acting of lead actor Gregory Mann. Good morning, Papa! He made a character that had been voiced countless times before into his own, with a nuanced performance. Not only does man capture Pinocchio's innocence, but he gives the character a tougher edge when the wooden boy stands up for himself. Whether the scene is grim or uplifting, the puppet's optimism shines through his lines. Despite being relatively unknown, Mann was cast before he turned 13 due to his impressive vocal range. His work effortlessly brought the wooden boy to life. Who's Carlo? Carlo was a boy. Geppetto lost him many years ago. Where did he put him? How can you lose a whole person? Number 15, Mary Gibbs as Boo, Monsters, Inc. Since she was just five years old by the time Monsters, Inc. was released, Mary Gibbs is definitely the youngest performer on our list. It is my professional opinion that now is the time to panic! Uh -oh. <laughs> she was born to Pixar animator Rob Gibbs. While every parent thinks their child is the cutest, Rob ensured his daughter's supreme levels of adorable would be immortalized. Gibbs voiced Boo, the toddler who unexpectedly enters the world of monsters and forms an unbreakable bond with Sully. The actress later admitted that animators had to follow her sound with a microphone because she wouldn't sit still. Their work was clearly worth the effort. Boo's sweet performance has a lot of range, especially in scenes with Sully. And we have pitch-perfect casting to thank for it. Well, so long, kid. Mike Wazowski! <sighs> yeah. Oh, Boo. It's been fun. Number 14, Caitlin Diaz as Riley Anderson, Inside Out. While the majority of Inside Out follows the emotions inside her head, Riley is obviously a vital character to the story. Boo! I'll be joy! School was great, all right? Riley, is everything okay? <sighs> Sir, she just rolled her eyes at us. Since she's incredibly relatable and empathetic, it only takes us a few scenes before we're completely invested in her journey. Riley's a standout in an already amazing cast, thanks to actress Caitlin Diaz. While in her early teens, the performer confidently portrayed every emotional state you could think of. The central message that it's okay to feel sadness is expertly conveyed by Diaz's performance. We dare anyone to watch the scene where she confesses her unhappiness to her parents without getting choked up. I know you don't want me to, but... I miss home. I miss Minnesota. Number 13, Jordan Nagai as Russell. Up. After his wife passes, Carl Fredrickson honours her by going on the trip they never got to while she was alive. Unfortunately for him, and very fortunately for us, his trip is hijacked by an energetic wilderness explorer named Russell. Hey, let's play a game. It's called, See Who Can Be Quiet the Longest. Cool! My mom loves that game! The preteen Jordan Nagai beat out hundreds of others to win the role. His spirited and energetic performance ensured every one of Russell's jokes landed. Nagai also makes the overly talkative, curious, and ambitious character into a great comedic foil to the gruff Carl without ever getting too obnoxious. Since this is a Pixar movie, there are also moments where Russell shows true emotion. Nagai was incredibly capable of selling those tender scenes too. Now, it might sound boring, but I think the boring stuff is the stuff I remember the most. Number 12, Catherine Beaumont as Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Like the novel before it, Disney's Alice in Wonderland is chock full of zany, memorable characters. The one element holding all the wild elements together is the fish out of water herself, Alice. When I get home, I shall write a book about this place. If I... if I ever do... Get home. The legendary Catherine Beaumont was brought onto the project when she was around 12 years old. While we all remember the Mad Hatter, the White Rabbit, and the murderous Queen of Hearts, the story simply wouldn't work without her take on Alice. Her sincere and playful performance instantly made us root for the charming lead. 
After Beaumont's tremendous take, she made our hearts soar again when she played Wendy Darling in 1953's Peter Pan. I'm so glad you came back tonight. I might never have seen you. Why? Because I have to grow up tomorrow. Grow up? Tonight's my last night in the nursery. Number 11, Philip Glasser as Fival Mouskowitz, An American Tale. Philip Glasser made his Hollywood debut in An American Tale while he was under the age of 10. Henri, what's that over there? Oh, that is more America. Can we go see it? <laughs> you will. But upon hearing his performance, you'd expect he'd already worked with director Don Bluth for decades. He plays the Russian-born Fival. During his journey to America, he gets separated from his family. Philip Glass's voice pulls at your heartstrings as he strives to reunite with his loved ones. Everything about it makes us want to pull the underdog, or rather under mouse, in for a great big hug. But it isn't all doom and gloom. Fival's immense interest in all things new is believable and admirable thanks to the excitement and wonder Glasser brings to the role. Look, Papa, water! Is it the ocean? Yes, keep walking. Number 10, Corey Feldman as Young Copper, the Fox and the Hound. Throughout the 1980s, Corey Feldman would prove himself to be a talented child actor through a variety of roles. We like to think it all started with Disney's The Fox and the Hound. I want to find out what that smell is. Okay, Copper, but the master ain't gonna like you wandering off. I won't get lost, Chief. I can smell my way back. The pup is curious and playful, as he should be. But there's also a shyness underneath as he comes to terms with what's expected of him as a hunting dog. In just a handful of scenes, Feldman captures all of the pup's nuanced emotions. And we can't deny how precious his little howl is. Before Kurt Russell took over the role as the older version of the hound dog, Feldman impressed us with his performance. Copper, you're my very best friend. And you're mine too, Todd. Number 9, Noah Schnapp as Charlie Brown, the Peanuts movie. Playing an iconic character like Charlie Brown has got to be intimidating. I just hope this new kid has never heard of me. He would know nothing of my past imperfections. But Noah Schnapp of Stranger Things fame proved he was more than up to the challenge. Since Charlie doesn't have the best luck, the actor leaned into the character's pessimism when it was called for. But Schnapp also injected a bit more humour and light-heartedness to the classic character. His multi-dimensional portrayal made us see the character in a whole new light. In Schnapp's hands, Charlie was hopeful and sweet while maintaining traditional characteristics. It's even more impressive to consider that he was only around 10 years old during filming. Let's just say there's this girl I'd like to impress, but she's something and I'm nothing. If I were something and she was nothing, I could talk to her. Or if she was nothing and I was nothing, I could talk to her. But she's something and I'm nothing. Number 8, Gabriel Damon as Littlefoot, The Land Before Time. The Land Before Time follows a group of young dinosaurs as they search for the fabled Great Valley during the midst of a large-scale famine. Do you remember the way to the Great Valley? I guess so. But why do I have to know you're going to be with me? Leading them is Littlefoot, voiced by a young Gabriel Damon. The group's journey is really kicked into gear after the death of Littlefoot's mother. This tragic scene is expertly handled by Damon with all the grace of a seasoned actor. Throughout the film, Littlefoot grows from being a scared and lost child to becoming the formidable leader his friends need him to be. All the while, Damon's performance grows with him. He flawlessly showcased Littlefoot's strength and compassion during the solid beginning to a long-running franchise. You got a nice flat head, Flathead. <laughs> My name is not Flathead. My name is Littlefoot. Number 7, Ole E. Cravalho as Moana. Moana. With her home island under threat of a mysterious blight, the young Moana leaves for the first time to ask for the demigod Maui's aid. And you will board my boat, sail across the sea, and put it back! Ole E. Cravalho incredibly had no acting credits to her name when she was cast at the age of 14. But honestly, she really didn't need any. Throughout the film, Cravalho's banter with co-star Dwayne Johnson sounds entirely natural. 
Her desire to explore the wider world inspires us to go on our own adventures too. Moana's moments of vulnerability and doubt are also handled with skill as well. Oh, and we haven't even gotten to her immaculate voice. Whenever Cravalho starts to sing, we want to belt out every lyric alongside her. Number 6. Dakota Fanning as Coraline Jones Coraline Dakota Fanning quickly rose as a go-to child actor throughout the 2000s. When looking back at her resume, Coraline Jones remains one of her best performances. How can you walk away from something and still come back to it? Walk around the world. Small world. After moving to a new town, the character discovers an entrance to a unique and disturbing world. Fanning makes the odd and somewhat irritable Coraline relatable and engaging. Even when she's doing something we wouldn't, we root for her because she's so driven. Coraline also hits serious roadblocks along the way. Through Dakota's nuanced delivery, our hearts break along with the characters whenever things get dark. The actress began voicing the role when she was just around the age of 12. Over a decade later, Fanning's work on Coraline stands as an early demonstration of her immense talent. I almost fell down a well yesterday, Mom. Uh-huh. I would have died. That's nice. Number 5. Alexander Gould as Nemo. Finding Nemo. While we adore revisiting Marlin and Dory's strained friendship, let's not forget who the movie is named after. At age 7, Alexander Gould swam to the top of the cast list and was chosen to voice the titular lost fish in Finding Nemo. And his performance deserves just as much credit as those of his older co-stars. I'm looking for someone too. Hey, we can look together. I'm Dory. I'm Nemo. Nemo? That's a nice name. At first, Nemo is headstrong, excitable, and yearns to be rid of his training wheels. But over the course of the film, Nemo begins to realize the value of caution and patience. He becomes incredibly sympathetic as he matures into a thoughtful and determined young fish. Gold's ability to convey Nemo's growth makes us want to just keep swimming back to watch this movie over and over again. Um, big and blue? I knew it! Number 4. Bradley Pierce as Chip, Beauty and the Beast while we love several supporting characters in this Disney classic, the young Chip stands out thanks to a terrific performance. There may be something there that wasn't there before. What's there, Mama? Shh. I'll tell you when you're older. When the conceited prince was cursed by an enchantress, a boy turned into a small teacup with a noticeable feature. Chip was only intended to have one line of dialogue, but after the young Bradley Pierce stepped up to the mic, the filmmakers gave him more time to shine. There's something about the innocence in his voice that instantly made us want to protect the teacup from getting another chip. If anyone but Pierce had come along, the character might not have been as vital to the plot. It's now impossible for us to imagine the movie without the young actor's pure and charming vocals. Mama, there's a girl in the castle. Now, Chip, I'll not have you making up such wild stories. Really, Mama? I saw her! Number 3. Jonathan Taylor Thomas as Young Simba, The Lion King after proving himself on Home Improvement, a young Jonathan Taylor Thomas earned every child actor's dream job, a role in a Disney movie. But there's no way we could have known how iconic and celebrated his character would go on to be. Danger! Ha! I walk on the wild side. I laugh in the face of danger. <laughs> As a cub, Simba is carefree, bold and confident in his place in the world. The actor's natural charisma seeps through every line and charms us. But whenever the plot veers towards heavier subject matter, you can feel the weight of the world in Thomas's delivery. Dad? Dad, come on. You gotta get up. Dad. Mufasa's death scene definitely hits hard thanks to the actor's heartbreaking performance. The tremendous performance Thomas delivered is likely to be cherished for generations to come. Number 2. Anthony Gonzalez as Miguel, Coco Although Coco boasts gorgeous animation, an emotional story and incredible music, everything hinges on the lead character, Miguel. Sometimes I look at De La Cruz and I get this feeling, like we're connected somehow. 
Like, if he could play music, maybe someday I could too. Thankfully, Pixar could not have asked for a better fit than Anthony Gonzalez. He officially joined the cast at just 11 years old. Throughout his adventure in The Land of the Dead, Miguel follows his dream to become a musician. His passion is so tangible that we cheer for every win and try not to cry during every painful setback. It's the mark of a great performer who can make our hearts ache and soar along with theirs. And if that wasn't enough, Gonzalez blew us away with his singing talents. There's nothing we wouldn't have given to lift Miguel's spirits and see him succeed. The moment she's gone from the living world... You disappear from this one. You'll never get to see her. Ever again. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Deve Chase as Lilo. Lilo and Stitch. Not every child actor can carry both a Disney movie and a Studio Ghibli masterpiece. While we do love Deve Chase as Chihiro, it's her work as Lilo that we really had to highlight. I'll remember you though. I remember everyone that leaves. Her lead character is an unapologetically quirky young girl who always follows her heart. At the same time, Lilo also carries the pain that comes with losing her parents. Chase hits both the highs and the lows of the lead's emotions so well that it feels like the animated character is a fully formed person. It was also incredibly endearing to hear how determined she was to make Stitch part of her family. Before Chase had become a teenager, she brought us a wonderful character that we would never leave behind or forget. Ohana means family. Family means nobody, nobody gets, gets left, left behind. Or... Or forgotten. I know, I know. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.